Well, g'day everyone. Welcome back to Philippine Life. Um, special hello and welcome to new subscribers. Um, the picture you're looking at here is the first builder of the house that uh, we had built. And as you can see, he's got a small bucket of tools and that's pretty much all he had. So everything that we needed for the build, we had to supply uh, ourselves and literally everything. And the images you're looking at here is a supply shed that we had built to keep all the cement bags dry and all the materials that we required uh, and the tools safe and dry. So that's the first thing to consider when building a house is that you actually got to build a small house before you even start uh, to, unless of course you've, you've got another dwelling close by that you can house the cement, which we didn't have. So we had to go down this route and of course any sort of uh, tools, ladders, chairs, tables, anything that's, that's needed to help build the house, um, wooden horses for uh, you know cutting timber and so on and so forth. So everything had to be handmade for the job. As you can see that the supply shed is elevated off the floor for obvious reasons to keep everything dry. Um, as you can see, we, we've had multiple deliveries of cement. I've, I've lost count of how many bags that was used, but it was a lot um, because we had a, a slab second floor. So um, we'll get into that as the video progresses on. So yeah, a supply shed, a must. Okay, so we started digging the holes out and as you can see, uh, it's all mountain rock, apart from the first 150 mil of topsoil it was straight into mountain rock, which at the time uh, wasn't a good thing for the builders and labourers to dig out. But for the house itself, it's brilliant because, uh, you know, that's it's going to help make a solid foundation where the, you know, the ground's not going to move over time as it's, uh, you know, it's solid mountain rock. Then uh, once all the holes were dug or as the holes were being dug, the, the reinforcement columns were being made and then painted with uh, rust guard to stop any rust on the reinforcement. Um, and this just went on for weeks. Uh, the guys, uh, there they are, chipping away at the mountain rock and taking it away in bags. Um, it was a very slow process. I guess at the beginning I had about five workers. The rest are all family members. Every All the family chipped in, so they kept an eye on what was going on and uh, you know ensured that the quality was was getting done um, i was in australia uh, while all this was happening trying to convey what i how i wanted things done i planned the house they had the plans that i supplied and i would talk to the builders via skype uh, on several occasions um, you know when when i needed to ask questions and when i, I wanted to inquire about certain things on how things were getting done so I was in close contact with the builders, even though I was here for the, uh, the majority of the, of the build. You can see like a perimeter, perimeter fence, if you like. That was important because of the one meter by one meter holes that were dug. Uh, this is right out in the province. Um, you know, there's no electricity. Uh, people walk around at night between houses, uh, you know, uh, cutting through other people's property and so on, so we had to we had to bounder the, uh, the the house perimeter so that people didn't fall in the holes, and it also uh, was was put up for string lining later on to get uh, an overall level of the building site, which you'll see as time goes on. You'll notice in the background I've got um, uh, six inch uh, besser blocks, we call them here, concrete blocks, hollow blocks they're called in the Philippines. I guess, um, you know, for the purpose of the house, we didn't necessarily need four inch, uh, six inch blocks, but I chose six inch over four inch um, just for peace of mind, stability, and the fact that um, the typhoon um, Yolanda went straight through this part of the province in northern Cebu. So with that in mind, I, I decided to go with the six inch uh, block and when it's rendered either side and it's filled with concrete, it's an eight inch thick wall. Um, so there was 
no expense spared there. And also, even on that itself, I went to the hollow block maker and uh, I wanted to see what type of sand he was using to ensure that it was a, a, a decent grit uh, river sand, uh, salt free river sand. And I wanted to um, give him the ratios of how I wanted the blocks made. Because if you've noticed over there, you'll see a lot of the hollow block buildings um, or houses, sorry, dwellings, uh, that the hollow block uh, crumbles away uh, over time. It's like um, it's it's like it's poorly poorly put together, and uh, well, it is <laughs> basically. And um, so I, I I got the hollow blocks made to my specifications. Um, so that you know, I want it to last. I want it to see a, a few generations out, not just not just mine and and the next. So, so they've dug out all the holes. Uh, as you can see, lots of mountain rock everywhere. The footprints you'll see in the front left-hand side, they go in the one metre by one metre footings that we've dug out, and the uh, columns are all pre-assembled, all done by hand. Everything was done by hand. There wasn't a power tool until about two or three months into the build. Everything was done by hand. There were special uh, jigs that was made up out of uh, the coconut wood that we needed. You, you'll notice that there's an enormous amount of wood on site and uh, you'll see why later on. There's um, an enormous amount of coconut wood involved. And when we had the coconut, uh, when we purchased the coconut wood, we made sure that we had all the uh, offcuts, all the trimmings, the bark, if you like. We made sure we had all of that um, because that was what helped. Uh, that's what put the floor in the supply shed. It's excellent for bracing, and we just didn't need to have the internal coconut wood. <coughs> excuse me for. Uh, for a lot of it, you know, that only needed to be good for the bearing, weight bearing. Um, so yeah, we, we, we wasted nothing. We used everything. There's quite a lot of pictures of the family members. This has been pulled out of photo albums, so it wasn't necessarily, the photos weren't taken uh, for a video per se. So a lot of this is in the break times. And talking about the break times, when you employ builders and laborers, uh, it's your, as the uh, homeowner, it, you pay, as well as pay their wages, you supply their, their food and drink, their snacks, and you have to allow a certain amount of money for that as well. Um, so we would have family members go and buy the bread and the drink and the coffees and all that sort of thing. Um, from memory, this is a few years ago now, but from memory, the, the builder was 350 peso a day and the labourers were 200 to start with per day. And so, um, you know, I had five, so it was about a thousand pesos a day, uh, you know, for, to get the build done, which I thought was quite reasonable. Um, a lot of form work, even the columns that were, that were made, um, the timber that surrounds the columns, that's all handmade with marine ply, uh, backed with bamboo timber. Um, the site that this was at, there's no road access for the last 500 metres, so everything was carted in by hand off the trucks, right down to the stones and the sand that got dumped half a kilometre away and was brought up to the site in bags. So it's an enormous task. Something that's done in such a short time in Western countries with, you know, hired scaffolding and uh, those sorts of things to make things and access and all that. Um, this is just a totally different ball game, and just one that you've got to be patient and appreciate. And things are done their way. As much as you try to influence the build, uh, because you're paying for it at the end of the day, uh, they're doing it. So, um, but as I said, I had family members there to keep an eye on things, uh, make sure they weren't <laughs> slacking. They they couldn't slack. They couldn't slack around. My father-in-law was there, and you know he's a he's a good worker. Uh, my brother-in-law, uh, he's a good worker. 
and uh, he kept them all going. He kept their brakes to whatever it was supposed to be and got them all back to work. So that's one of the things I didn't really have to worry about. Everything that was done had to have form work done for it. So even the lifting up of the, the reinforced columns, you, they had to build, um, you know, form work to get them in place. An enormous task, but everything was uh, painted uh, to, you know, to prevent the rust. Now there's quite a few pictures here, so what I'm going to do is just just back off on the explanation for a while and come back. I'll just put some music on, let you enjoy the pictures and see how things were uh, progressed over time. Uh, I'm restricted on this channel to 15 minutes and upload, so uh, I'm already 11 minutes in. So I'll, this will cut off with the outro shortly after some music and um, come back to see some more. Oh, before I go, you're seeing the footprint now in the one metre by one metre holes. So that's all the reinforcement involved in every footprint for every column in the house. All right, folks, we'll see you again in a short while. Thank you.